The title of this video is Natural Penalties from Spiritual Traps. Natural Penalties from Spiritual Traps. In other words, a lot of what you're going through in the natural is the results of a trap that was set before you spiritually. There are too many people in this world, too many so-called Christians, that call themselves spiritual without preparing themselves with spiritual preparedness. There are too many so-called Christians and even people that refer to themselves as spiritual refuse or neglected spiritual preparedness. Yes, you might have studied books that man had written, that someone else had written. And because you lack spiritual preparedness, it was so easy for you to throw aside the sword of the spirit, the very weapon that you need to defend yourself. Not defend yourself in the natural, but defend yourself in this spiritual warfare, protecting your mind, protecting your heart, and in many cases, even protecting your very life. You never allow someone else to get inside your head. I repeat that again. Never allow anyone inside your head. What I find so interesting is some of these same people that are anti-Christ, that are enemies of the Most High, are quick to tell you to throw away the Bible. The Bible's not real. The Bible contradicts itself. And because you are not spiritually prepared, you listen to what they say and you throw aside your weapon. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, they're not natural, but they're spiritual. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. So a lot of those strongholds are that false information that false teachers and preachers are spewing out. And because you have no spiritual preparedness, you throw the sword of the spirit aside. And if you watch these individuals that's anti-Christ and anti-God, if you listen to them long enough, they will take that same word that they encourage you to reject and you will hear them quoting that same word to benefit them and their agenda. Whenever they find or deem it necessary, they will quote that same Bible. They will study that same Bible and then turn after telling you to throw it away. They in turn will start quoting that same Bible. If you look at a lot of the so-called motivational speakers, the ones that's making millions of dollars off of you, speaking positivity, a lot of their base is scriptural. They will use the Bible to milk money out of you, feeding you the word of God. And then they'll say it's positive speaking, it's motivational 
speaking. But yet a lot of these same people will tell you that the Bible is not real and that you need to get rid of it. <clears throat> I want to read a scripture to you. Taken from the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Reading the 10th to the 18th verse. And it reads as follows. Finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. In other words, don't be so frail sensitive, or weak. But the Bible says to be strong in the Lord and in the power, not your own power, but in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. I'm going to read that first portion of the 11th verse. It's giving you instructions to put on the whole armor of God. Spiritual preparedness. Being prepared for spiritual warfare. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles or schemes of the devil. Because trust me, the devil will throw fiery darts at you. And it could come in any form. Through a wife, through a husband, through a child. Your own family members. Your own church members. People that are close to you. Your job. Satan will come in any direction. But you have to be prepared for that. And if you're not prepared for that, he's able to defeat you with just one fiery dart of the wicked. The 12th verse says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. In other words, it's telling you that this is not a carnal fight. This is not a fleshly fight. So when you look at a person in the flesh and you view them as your enemy, your focus is in the wrong direction because that is not your enemy. But that individual is being used by your enemy. You're blaming and fault finding another human being and not really pointing fingers or blaming the person that deserves to be blamed. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. The rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places not natural wickedness not fleshly wicked wickedness not carnal wickedness but against spiritual wickedness in high places or government places or in leadership that's where the wickedness is coming from. But yet we're in a natural world. The 13th verse says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. It's telling you again to equip yourself, prepare yourself, to arm yourself. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye, may be able to withstand in the evil day, the day in which we are living now. And then it says, and having done all to stand. 
The 14th verse says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Now, truth is a word that has been taken out of context on so many levels. You can receive the truth, but then someone else that comes along with their own truth If you're not spiritually prepared, that person with their own truth will cause you to separate that truth that you have and replace it with their truth. In other words, they become your God because now they are controlling you, controlling your mind with their truth. Their truth that has not been tested by time. Their truth and idea that they came up with because maybe they were hurt in the church or a Christian did them wrong or maybe the Bible was forced upon them in their youth. So now they grow up and they reject the truth. They reject the book. Because of what happened to them. This is like spiritual PTSD. But the Bible says, stand therefore. In other words, stand sure. Stand flat foot and solid. Stand strong. With the having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. In other words, not only do you receive the truth, but you also live a righteous lifestyle. Let me stop there for a moment. Many of these so-called conscious folks or wokeness They may gird themselves with their truth. But yet if you watch their life, watch their lifestyle, there's no righteousness in them. There is no righteousness in them. So they're like a ship without a sail. They're just drifting throughout life. Gobbling up everything that comes to them. Everything that sounds good. They will regurgitate that back to you. And because you're not spiritually prepared. You will fall in the trap. That will destroy you naturally. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. That breastplate of righteousness protects your chest. It protects your heart. So when you stand firm in truth and your lifestyle, that lifestyle of righteousness backs up what you say. Your feelings are not easily hurt. Your heart is not easily broken. You're strong. You're standing fast in truth and with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You're not allowing anything to penetrate your heart and to cause you to stumble. That breastplate of righteousness protects you from the fiery darts of the wicked. You know in a natural world, if you're shot in your chest with a firearm, or if you're shot in your heart, it takes your life. In many cases, instantly. You die even before you reach the hospital. In spite of how much 
natural medicine they try to use to save your life, your life is snuffed away from you. So you have law enforcement and even military that will put on a bulletproof vest. That becomes their shield. That's their breastplate to protect them from the bullets or the rounds of the evil one. Whereas in the spiritual sense, we have on the breastplate of righteousness that we will be able to block out the fiery darts of the wicked. So it says, in having on the breastplate of righteousness, the 15th verse says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. How do you walk? How's your walk in life? How do you move? See, if you move like a thug, you'll get thug results. If you move like a bum, you get bum results. However you move in life, that will dictate the environment that you bring upon yourself. So the Bible says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In other words, it's how you walk in life. Where you allow your feet to take you. If you allow your feet to take you to the bar or to a married woman's house or a married woman's home or uh, you're a woman and you're seeing a single young man, where are you allowing your feet to take you? The 16th verse says, above all, in other words, and most importantly, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. In other words, your faith is what saves you. See, many of you have lost faith. Many of you have become weak in faith because of so much that has been happening in this world. You just take the last couple of world, uh, years with uh, the COVID and the number of people that lost their lives. There's people holding it in that they lost their parent, their mom or their dad. Not necessarily from the pandemic or the pestilence, but because they had cancer or they had a heart attack or maybe even a child that lost their lives by a stray bullet. So then you start questioning God, why did you allow that to take place? Not realizing that we're in the middle of a warfare, a spiritual warfare where there will be casualties. See, if you are truly spiritual, you are fully aware that in warfare, there will be casualties. And it may be someone very close, near, and dear to you. But because of your faith, taking the shield of faith, you now, you're now in a position where the fiery darts of the wicked can't quench you even in your weakest state. Even in your weakest condition, your faith is what holds you up. And nobody gets mad but the devil. The devil will become angry once he realizes that he cannot penetrate your faith. I don't care how good he makes it sound. I don't care how strong his case may be to disprove the Bible. To disprove Jesus' existence. To disprove the existence of God. Doesn't matter. Your faith is what saves you. And that's why I believe in the 16th verse it says, Above all, above anything else that was mentioned prior to that, 
in this scripture. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Your faith is a shield. And when that demon looks you in your eyes and see your posture, that you're standing firm. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. He will have no other choice but to flee. That's not saying he's not going to come back. That just means you have to become even more prepared. And be ready. So above all taking the shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked. Not some, not most, but all. As long as you stand firm and you hold fast to the profession of your faith, you can't be touched. The 17th verse says, And take the helmet of salvation. In other words, know that you're saved. There's no question in your mind that you are saved. Even when you slip and dip or you make a mistake or you sin. Because we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all righteousness. Not meaning you have to confess your sins to another human being, but to God. So knowing that you are saved in spite of what you may go through in life, regardless of how weak you may become, and regardless of what thought comes to your mind that cause you to doubt your salvation. Take on the helmet of salvation. In other words, protect your mind. Don't allow just anyone in your head. Don't be quick to always tell what's in your heart because then that's casting your pearl before swine and they're able to turn and rend you. So you have to protect that. Leave people guessing and let them guess. I see it on YouTube quite often where if a person can't get to you, what they'll do is they'll put out false information on you and then you see that person become weak, putting their guards down because now they feel they have to prove something to the world because that person may have a lot of followers. So they'll make a video explaining themselves. I've seen Kwame Brown do that quite often and explain himself. And I had even commented and said, you don't owe no one an explanation. If they're coming at you like, oh, you got, you don't take care of your kids, or you don't do this, and you don't do that, you're a deadbeat, let them say that. Let them believe what they want to believe, as long as you know the truth. And as long as God knows the truth, and most important, once you, you're, even if you're, your children, knowing that your children know the truth. So don't be so quick to allow people in your head. And that's a, a weapon or a tool that the unrighteous are doing to get inside your head to put you on a defense. And now you feel you have to make a video to defend yourself against someone that put out lies. They lied on Jesus. Of course they're going to lie on you. So the Bible says... Take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Now, the sword of the spirit, it says, which is the word of God. That sword is that Bible. That sword is the word of God. Even when they question you, how is that the word of God? Prove to me that is the word of God. No, the burden of proof is on you. I don't have to prove anything. I'm not obligated to prove anything. The Bible says the just shall live by faith and not by sight. So you take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit because that's what you fight with. 
You fight with the word. And you have people that don't like when you come back with the word. I've had people say to me, like, well, how could you use the Bible to prove or disprove this or that or the other? Because that's my sword. And the only thing that would do is silence them or they would try to come another direction to pull you into a debate, which is quite fruitless. Having someone pull you into a endless debate because everything you say, the devil will give them ideas to refute what you say, to challenge what you say. And you define yourself, you become like a cat chasing his tail. You're just going in circles. And the only thing come, at, come as a result of that is a bunch of confusion. And God is not the author of confusion. So the 17th verse says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. In other words, that's what you fight with, the word. Not with science. Not what some other author says, but the word of God is the sword of your spirit. The 18th and final verse says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Many of us don't pray like we should pray. We only pray when we feel we need to pray or we want something or we want God to do something or we find ourselves weak, but yet our prayer life is lacking. But according to the 18th verse, it says praying always. Sometimes I could be driving and in my spirit, I could be praying. I'm fully aware. I'm awake. My eyes are still on the road, but I'm praying to myself. Sometimes I may even just thank him. But you always pray. Men must always pray and not faint. So the Bible in the 18th verse says, Praying always with all prayer and supplications in the spirit. In other words, just don't mumble off some words that sound good and make you think that you're praying. I'll repeat that again. Just don't mumble off a bunch of words that sound good and give you a good feeling to make you think you pray. When in reality, you're fooling and deceiving no one but yourself. So you have to learn how to pray in the spirit and not according to your own soul. See, because when you pray in the spirit, in your prayer, you start manifesting things wrong with you. It takes your focus off of the world or off of someone else. You're praying that God will cause a lightning bolt to strike your enemies. That's not in Christ. That's not the right type of spirit. Because when you pray... In the spirit, the, the focus of attention now is set on the condition of your own soul. What do I need to do to change my condition? How do I make myself better? How could I draw myself closer to the most high? So the 18th verse says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. In other words, keep your eyes open. Don't fall asleep. There's too many sleep Christians out there. Because in your own mind, in your own heart, you're going to heaven anyhow. So you don't really need to pay attention to what's going on around you. I'm going to quote something Hassan Campbell always says in his videos. Hassan Campbell always say to basically watch those that's in your circle before they hurt you. 
Be aware of what's around you and what's in your circle before they hurt you. Keep your eyes open. You gotta always be aware. And you could tell a person that's spiritual minded, and sometimes people are spiritual minded and don't even realize it. See, that's like a person that's always saying, I'm strong. If you're strong, you don't need to say you're strong. That sounds like somebody that's trying to convince themselves that they're strong. Oh, I'm strong. I'm a strong black woman. I'm a strong black man. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm a strong parent. No, you're weak. Because if you're really strong, you don't have to repeat it. You don't have to encourage yourself or try to prove to you that you're strong. Just be who you are. And the Bible says, when I'm weak, then I'm made strong. See, your strength is proven or displayed in your weakness at your weakest hour. But if you're always strong, then how can you know you're strong if you don't have to experience weakness? If you don't experience weakness, how do you know you're strong? Because when you're weak, that's when you're made strong. Being able to endure that trial, that tribulation that you find yourself in. So you have to always be aware of what's around you. Always know what's in your circle. Pay attention to your circle before they hurt you. Those are the words of Hassan Campbell, and he should put that on a t-shirt. So feedback, tell me what you think. Subscribe to this channel. I want to reach a thousand subscribers and more if possible. Share this video. Uh, check out the link on the bottom. I have a, a store that I started a website and I'd appreciate if you go and you support that. All the links are on the bottom in the description box. Feedback. Tell me what you think. Until next time. I'm fearless.